My father was a career uh, infantry officer. I was born at Fort Benning, the home of the infantry. And uh, growing up around it, uh, it was a part of my life from a very, very young age. And it just inspired me. He inspired me. And that it, it was something that I wanted to pursue and follow his example. I want, first off, I wanted to go active duty. But because I got my GED and I scored so low on my ASVAB, the National Guard was the only way I could go to go through to get in the military, and I haven't regretted it. <laughs> a Marine Corps uh, recruiter talked to me first. My dad's Air Force. He was like, "Join the Air Force," and I was like, "I want to be, I want to be the best. Like, I want to be a Marine." So then I went into the Marine Corps. I love this country, but I feel like that there's more, you know. And you always see the commercial to be all that you can be, and. Uh, so I was thinking like, yeah, you know, I, I, I really think I could do more for myself and for my family. Yeah, so I was deployed to Afghanistan for around like nine to ten months. I want to say in 2009, 2010-ish. I went to uh, South Korea and that was for the, um, you know, there's always a conflict in South, South Korea multiple training exercises, you know, uh, Kim Jong-un's Kim Jong -un's to the north. You know, that's, that's always gonna be an, an issue. Deployed to Iraq in 2008 and was in Iraq for about nine months and the total deployment time was just about a year. I was in Iraq, I was the second group to go to Iraq in 03 to 04. And then um, I went to Afghanistan to, oh, from 08 to 09. So we ran the flight line, so like, again, everybody that needs to go somewhere, any cargo that needs to go somewhere, um, we did. That does include like people that, you know, don't get to make it back. So like we did, so usually it's only like the person's unit um, that does the angel ceremonies because we run the flight line. Like we had to do everyone. So I probably did like hundreds and hundreds of angel ceremonies, um, which at one point I kind of just got like immune missing family, missing birthdays or holidays, and just the normal day-to-day -day events of family life that we take for granted until we don't have them. And that was probably the biggest challenge, was being away from, from family. You never get used to it because, yes, I didn't get shot at when I was in Iraq. Didn't do anything, didn't get shot at at all. But when I was in Afghanistan, I got shot at twice. I got into two firefights. And knowing that you could possibly get blown up, get shot at, having bullets fly by you, and it's, it's either way you look at it, even if you've been to, your, this is, it was your first one or your 50th one, it's still scary. It shows you the importance of the U.S. military in all the locations around the world. Because, you know, especially in South Korea, because you'll go and ask a local, like, what do you, what do you think about us? Our, our presence here and they're like we love you guys here because you guys you know keep the crazy man to the north from doing whatever he wants you know the challenging part is my PTSD and my anger yeah. and, and everything I've been in and out of um, programs I have been in and out of the uh, mental hospital the mm -hmm. Uh, Montreal, Montreal Hospital, numerous times I was in and out of that because of my anger problems. And I got the scars to prove it on my hands. And because of my anger problems and me being, having my anger problems, that's how I got connected to the vet to vet Well, coming back home, it's, it's definitely hard to get acclimated to the uh, civilian life. Not realizing that until someone points that out to you. That, hey, you don't need to be yelling or you don't need to be uh, so upset about this it's not that big a deal and a lot of there was some and there was quite a bit of effort to help us adjust as we came back uh, but that was probably the biggest is is getting back into life as normal life is going on and the other is realizing you unplugged and the world went on without you and then you come back and it's still here. Yeah. <laughs>
just the work ethic, like, you know, seeing how people work compared to how I work, um, that's difficult for me sometimes. Um, I don't necessarily um, get as upset about, like, death and stuff like that as other people do, so. Um, stuff like that. And stuff, again, about, like, being a female and working with all males and going to not working with all males and working with a bunch of different people and just, you know, different backgrounds and stuff. I live right up the road, but unless, um, without this weekend, I would have never known what this, this farm was about. We've been on this farm learning about uh, how the, how they rescue these horses from kill farms. It's been really a lot of fun just being able to get away and have fun at somewhere else and just be able to relax. It's been fantastic. We've gotten to do some, a lot of fun things and pretty amazing things. We did five stand shotgun shooting, which I'd never done before and realized that I'm not a great shotgun person yet. Um, it's been really good. Um, it's been stressful at work. I do have a six year old, um, though it's been a much uh, needed child free break from both work and my kids, so. Just a fun weekend of somebody saying thank you in different ways than we might find normally. Um, right. Fed incredibly well. Victor's a great cook. Sure is. <laughs> and knows exactly where to find great ingredients as yeah. well. 